and the camera was That was amazing. That was one of the better things I've ever heard. Hey! Hi, what's going on here? Why are you sitting on the floor of the set? If you grew up watching Nickelodeon, then there's a high chance you've heard stories about the infamous Dan Schneider. Dan got his start in the entertainment industry in the 80s. After attending Harvard for just one semester, he moved back home to Memphis to work on computers. Go ahead and talk to Jerry. I'm sure he's going to have some super intelligent things to say. Really, really witty. No, Jerry. There's no way that's true. I went to Harvard. Harvard. Not really. This was ultimately short-lived, and he would abandon his job with the goal of making it big in Hollywood. He packed up his bags and moved to Los Angeles, California to jumpstart his acting career. Dan Schneider starred in movies such as Better Off Dead, The Big Picture, and Hot Resort. And although the movies may have performed well in the box office, it was apparent that the big screen was not his medium. His portrayal as Dennis Blunden in ABC's Head of the Class would bring clarity to Dan Schneider. He was going to dominate television. Instead of acting, Dan began to write, produce, and create shows such as All That, Keenan and Kel, The Amanda Show, Zoe 101, Victorious, Drake and Josh, and Sam and Cat. He's quoted as the most successful writer and TV executive in children's entertainment television for the last 30 years. In the history of self-reports, Dan Schneider has to be leading the charge. A full-grown man has plastered his entire career with his foot fetish. Dan Schneider has deleted over 14,000 tweets. That included the words child, foot, and toes. Almost all of Dan Schneider's shows include aspects of physical comedy, including feet. After all, feet are funny. They're silly. Doesn't everyone just love feet? No. Dan Schneider and feet are inseparable. One simply cannot exist without the other. In fact, entire meme compilations have been made about his foot fetish. There is a dark cloud of silence surrounding Nickelodeon's past horrors. In the late 90s and early 2000s, Nickelodeon's dialogue coach Brian Peck and Dan Schneider hosted scouting events for new talent. These events would include taking your shoes off and participating in camp-like activities such as tennis or swimming. Revenge of the Sis podcast has has been relentlessly investigating Dan Schneider over the years. And according to an anonymous child actor who attended one of these scouting calls, parents were separated from children to attend a seminar in order to meet agents, while the kids were scouted at the pool. And these kids were aged 13 to 22. He's like, you gotta just take off your shoes, just like run around in front of the camera, you know, talk about how much you love being barefoot. And at the time, even, you know, it was like, okay, that's weird, but, I didn't think anything of it because I was still young. Right. So what would happen is that your parents would send you to sort of like this camp. It was basic acting classes and it was an opportunity for the kids to get discovered. And interestingly enough, most of the kids got discovered by the pool. Brian Peck was later charged with 11 accounts of sexual assault with a minor named John Doe in court documents. Although the identity of the 15-year-old minor has never been confirmed in fear that it would damage the young star's career, speculations on the internet have swirled around since this case. According to yet another anonymous source, the minor at the time was allegedly Drake Bell. It is impossible to ever know if this is true or not, but the internet seems convinced. Brian Peck was convicted in 2000 four and served 16 months in prison. After his release, he was never allowed to work near children ever again, right? No, Disney hired him to work on Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Hi, I'm Cole Sprouse and you're watching Disney Channel. An article from the LA Times in 2002 named Groomed to Be All That details how child actors were media trained and prepped on how to deal with their unordinary life by Nickelodeon. They would carry pamphlets and attend workshops so they knew how to deal with news outlets, reporters, and fans. It highlights Nickelodeon's awareness of the dystopian work environment these kids were thrown into, oftentimes thrust into the spotlight by adults who don't have their best interest in mind. But let's talk about problems that we can avoid, which is why today's video is sponsored by Keeps. Keeps is a subscription service that helps men keep their hair. They offer clinically proven treatments that help combat the symptoms of hair loss. Delivered right to your doorstep, you don't even have to leave your house. 
Best of all, Keep's treatment plans are affordable, typically half the cost of pharmacy prices. With Keeps, you can get quality, expert care without ever visiting a doctor's office or pharmacy. You're also getting 24-7 care and support. Each treatment plan comes with a full year of unlimited messaging, so you can connect with your prescribing doctor about anything, anytime. Two out of three guys will experience hair loss before the age of 35, but don't worry, Keeps has you covered. In addition to clinically proven treatments, Keeps has an award-winning all-natural thickening shampoo and conditioner system. Keeps physicians will help you select the right products and treatments for your specific condition and hair goals. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com slash Philion or click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Philion. And thank you to Keeps for sponsoring this video. Under Dan Schneider's writing and directing, girls were overtly sexualized time and time again. The footage is haunting and disgusting, and by today's standards, it's almost ancient. The dichotomy of growing up watching Nickelodeon and reviewing this footage is eerie. It includes gratifying his obvious foot fetish, along with adult references that a child or young adult should not have to perform. Considering the power dynamic of an executive producer and actor, remember this is pre-Me Too when the culture surrounding predation in Hollywood was even more secretive. All this to say that social media campaigns or exposés would have fizzled out or would have been dealt with, if you catch my drift. In 2010, Nickelodeon hosted a website called The Slap, where actors from their most popular shows would post and interact with the media hosted on the site. Now, it redirects to Nick.com after Dan Schneider left Nickelodeon in 2018. One of the most disturbing pieces of content featured on The Slap was Ariana Grande or Cat Valentine from Sam and Cat being forced to perform vile acts that only a demented man would green light. So now, just for fun, I'm gonna say three sentences that I bet not one person has ever said before in the history of mankind. Sentence number one. Oh man, my uvula got stuck between that hamster's toes. See, that could never happen because your uvula is that swingy thing in the back of your throat right here. Sentence number three. Ah! I'm soaking wet. Quick, somebody bring me the ocean. No one would ever say that. Why? Because if you were soaking wet, and you're upset about it, the last thing you'd want is for somebody to bring you the ocean. Because the ocean is even more wet than even the wettest person in the world. Have you ever tried to get your whole big toe in your mouth? Check this out. Sometimes I wonder if you can get juice from a potato. Is it possible for a teenage girl to drink water upside down? Mmm, I'm thirsty! <laughs> it's not possible! <laughs> this has been me, in a video! Dan Schneider goes by Dan Warp on his social media accounts. He has since deleted over 20 million views of videos from his YouTube channel and curiously updated his playlists years after his involvement with Nickelodeon, pointed out by fellow YouTuber Sloan. Miranda Cosgrove from iCarly has weird clips of Dan touching her and awkward interactions with the production crew. It's definitely inappropriate and bizarre. Criminal? No one can really say for sure. Did she say nice things about me? Because I will tase her if necessary. Uh oh. I have the taser. We haven't had to use it in a long time. But I said lots of nice things. So I said nice things about you too. Oh. <laughs> That's gonna get on TV. What? That's gonna get on TV. <laughs> Jeanette McCurdy, or Sam from iCarly, and later Sam and Cat, quit acting and looks negatively on her acting career as a whole. She is the definition of a product of the toxic work environment and abuse she details receiving while working as a child actor. Hey Dan Schneider, I know you're watching my Vine. Do you like my Vine? Vine. Vine! Vine! Look what you've done to me. She would later find her place behind the camera working as a producer and director. Both Miranda Cosgrove and Jeanette McCurdy did not attend the Kids' Choice Awards in 2014, while Dan Schneider won a Lifetime Achievement Award. In 2019, she released a teaser called He Touched Me for a loose autobiography that she was making. 
This left the internet both disturbed and interested in who she was referencing. One theory is that her brother in this clip alludes to Dan Schneider. There's a lot of abuse that happens. I, I worked with an incredibly emotionally abusive producer. Um, like, I mean, even talking about it now, my, my face gets hot thinking it. The other theory is that this clip portrays a similar scene when she was in Law & Order SVU. It's also worth noting that Jeanette McCurdy is not part of the very successful iCarly reboot. She has even stated that she is ashamed of the role she played in the original iCarly. Amanda Bynes easily has the strangest and darkest story regarding Nickelodeon. She met Dan Schneider at 10 years old on the set of All That and would go on to get her own spin off show called The Amanda Show. Amanda Bynes was a child star who lacked a relationship with her parents. It seemed as if she was just the breadwinner for the family and that's all they cared about. She was quoted asking for breaks because she was working so much, she developed eating disorders, and was even medicated at a young age to help her deal with her problems such as dissociation, hiding her true self behind the character she played. In other words, acting was her way to cope with reality. At 16, Amanda wanted to be emancipated from her parents, meaning she could live her life independently without them. And during this period in her life, she would spend increasing amounts of time with Dan Schneider. An article claiming that she was going to live with Dan Schneider and his wife was removed from the internet in 2003. In 2014, at the age of 26 years old, Amanda Bynes was put in a conservatorship by her family. Since then, there have been outbursts from her Twitter alleging serious abuse from her father but nothing has happened. There is also speculation that potential abuse from a father figure means Dan Schneider. There have been numerous Twitter accounts that impersonate Amanda and ask for money or share random details about the conservatorship. And it's impossible to know if one of the accounts is actually her or not. A cryptic message that was apparently left by Amanda Bynes, detailed by NT Lawyer, reads out in capital letters, Dan did it. This could just be celebrity gossip, but it's oddly specific and sometimes correct. However, at the bottom of Crazy Days and Nights website, there is a disclaimer that states, the site publishes rumors, conjecture, and fiction. In addition to accurately reported information, certain situations, characters, and events portrayed in the blog are either products of the author's imagination or are used fictitiously. Information on this site may contain errors or inaccuracies, so there's nothing really to make of this. It's up for debate whether or not Jamie Lynn Spears had to quit Zoe 101 after becoming pregnant in in 2007 and ending the show in 2008. NT Lawyer, an anonymous blogger who runs the site Crazy Days and Nights, alleges that a producer is actually the father of Jamie Lynn Spears' child, who is old enough to be her grandfather, and that new boyfriends are being lined up as we speak. This was two months before she announced her pregnancy. One conspiracy is that Dan Schneider is the father of her child. Others believe it is another producer at Nickelodeon. Some denounce this conspiracy entirely, but it's certainly interesting. March 26, 2018, Dan and his production team, Schneider's Bakery, are let go from Nickelodeon with a severance package of $7 million. Because why not? Nickelodeon and Schneider said in a joint statement, since several Schneider's Bakery projects are wrapping up, both sides agreed that this is a natural time for Nickelodeon and Schneider's Bakery to pursue other opportunities and projects. There are two reasons why Nickelodeon cut ties with Dan Schneider, declining ratings and or allegations against him. It's incredibly easy to hate Dan Schneider, whether it be having teens deliver adult jokes, sexualizing young stars, or blasting feet over everyone's social media feed, no one from Nickelodeon has come forward with direct allegations. It is actually impressive how many dead ends and links surround this story. This is either the biggest Hollywood secret that has been kept under wraps or the result of a deranged but not criminal man and internet dogpiling. But deleting thousands of tweets and videos can only mean one thing. What is he hiding? Have you